Well, hello everyone. It seems that I'm too cool for YouTube to ban me. So I'm back bringing you videos. But just to let you know, I'll be putting videos up on my Twitch account first at twitch.tv slash the mush farmer. So y'all have a link below for all that. But just to let you know too, I removed all my advertising from my videos, all the monetization. You know, I figured that if YouTube is willing to ban me, well, I'm willing to remove all my ads, any, any chance of them making profit as well, you know, so. <clears throat> but it's still important that I get these videos up onto YouTube just to share information. Um, I think that's critical. Even, even if I got any kind of personal feelings, I think that's much more important. So, anyway, I'm out here today. It's getting close to spring. I think it's the 19th. And I'm starting misting today. I got this row back here misting first. It's in the morning. And it's been getting pretty cold. It was, uh, it got up to 70 degrees, you know, a couple weeks ago. And then, uh, the temperatures dropped all the way back down to highs of 30s in the day and low 20s at night. So, any night where it's been, or any day where it's been too cold, you know, my hose lines freeze up, so no chance of watering then. But, you know, it's also so cold that things aren't drying out either. So, pretty much every, every good day that I can turn the misters on, that uh, at least two days after you know you know heavy rain, um, that's when I'll start remisting again. And it did rain a couple days ago. I was actually going to miss yesterday, so I pushed it back to today. It's Monday today, so they're getting rewetted. But you can see right here, it's pretty, still pretty wet. Still looks pretty moist on this one. I opened up. I haven't haven't watered it yet today. You can see I have some Paziza mushrooms in here. They are kind of relative to the morels. Kind of a, the same kind of waxy uh, texture to them. Although I'm pretty sure they're not edible at all. But I, I can see them coming up. And I've, I've heard often that them coming up is a, a good sign of morels in an area. But I'm going to have to Ask the Morel King to see if uh, if that's just you know some standard or you know showing that I have you know the contamination problems that I did in all my spawn. But I see on, at least on these Importuna rows they're coming up a little bit here and there, and I can see a, a little tiny one there. Kind of cute. So no Morels popping yet. Soil is definitely warm enough, um, and as far as I've ever seen, they the earliest in Ohio is first week of April. So maybe still about another week, week and a half before I see anything. But hopefully, uh, 50 degree temperatures in the daytime these next these next few days. Hopefully, we're out of any kind of uh, nights in the 20s. I, I'm pretty sure we are. But, you know, you, you never know in, a, in a southern Ohio, the weather is crazy. You know, we've had, that's where, you know, the blizzard at 78, I think that was in March, way back then. I wasn't around for that. <laughs> but, uh, uh, one thing, you know, I've put these misting lines, I laid them across bricks here, and I got suggested to by Morel King that I ought to just suspend them. Um, I might still do that with these ones. I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem um, because the bricks really aren't taking too much surface area of the soil up. Um, but these uh, these other beds back here in the corner of my property, way back over here, I've uh, I'm, I've redone them. So let's go take a look at those. So these rows back here. I raised up the uh, the hoops again, and some of my space back 
her space back up a little bit to get some height on the shade cloth. That way the shade cloth isn't so so low to it. And you can see that instead of having the uh, misting line running on top of the, the hoops, I have it just laying on the, the ground, flipped upside down. And I've noticed that as long as your your rows are you know high in the center, then you can just run the the line at the top of the mound, and it, you know have enough clearance for the mist to come out and get everything wet. So, so these rows I pretty much you know mounted up more because they I made them fresh, and uh, you know a little bit more skinny than the garden rows. These ones are a bit wider though. Um, so what I'm going to do with those is I have some hemp string. I'm going to remove the lines off the top um, and then suspend them from the hoops. You know, just, a, just an inch or two away from the surface of the soil. And that way, uh, you know, there's no contact with the soil because I am going to have to get in here with a weed whacker probably at some point and take some of these greens out. You can see see quite a bit of dandelion and some grass growing back. This is the row that I put some uh, coconut core in. You can see doing really nicely. But I'll have to trim that up some, especially later in the season. These ones on the side here, these two, they had the clear plastic on them, which I noticed, you know, acted like a greenhouse. They got all this greenery going a lot faster. And you notice, you notice in my garden rows, I don't have any greenery in it. It's because I've always kept uh, shade cloth on them, well, rather landscape fabric on them for the garden. And that shaded out any, any seeds or vegetation that was there for, you know, several years. So, and then anything that did grow, I, I yank out. So I don't get a lot of weeds in the garden. And if I kind of treated this area here in the same manner, you know, pretty much just tilled up the entire space. And then the footpaths just cover in landscape fabric. And during the season, keep the shade cloth on it or even lay more landscape fabric on top of it, to, or, you know, plastic or tarps or something to, to kill off the, the grass. I'll, Although I know that I've heard quite a bit from Moral King about how hard the, the dandelions are to kill off. But, yeah, let me, uh, let me set these rows up here, get the lines off and uh, suspend it up and see how that looks. I uncovered this bed back here along with all these others and it looks like a good bit of mycelium on top. I can zoom in here. Do you like some mycelial mat there? Mycelium to me. All right, I got both these rows redone. You can see the, the line suspended. And of course, when I get some water weight in there, it'll sag a little bit more in spots. But for the most part, it's uh, about an inch or two above the the dirt, you can see the shadow underneath of it. And I can always readjust here and there if I got if I have to. But when uh, my other, my garden gets done watering, we'll check out see uh, see how much more effective this way of doing it is. All right, I got the misters running up here. I can hear them pretty good and 
as you can see, there's no mist escaping the shade cloth, just like in the garden area. If I pull these up, you can see the, the mist through there. It's just above the, uh, the soil. Well, it's look like, it looks like it's doing a really good job. I don't really think it'd be too much of a problem with anything making contact as far as, you know, maybe room for mushrooms to grow. Like, you know, the bricks or whatever. Mushrooms probably just, you know, pop up around it, but we'll see how it goes. But I'll probably do, I'll probably do this method if I change anything else over. And the second row is going as well. Again, I don't see any, don't see any mist blowing out. Even though it's kind of windy out here, it's really not blowing even out. Well, I see a little bit there coming out, but not that much. Back here, it stayed quite a bit more moist, even though we've had a, a few days of drying out. I can see where the, the ground is still very, very muddy and soft. So hopefully it'll, we'll get a few rains again and maybe I'll get some more else spread out on the outside of these garden, garden beds as well. I have noticed one issue when uh, doing all this is that when I have mushrooms growing underneath these shade cloth, that I'm gonna have to be pretty careful removing the cloth and putting it back on, you know, if there's still mushrooms present. That way I don't damage the mushrooms pulling the, the cloth across it or the wind catching it and then dragging it across the mushrooms. So, uh, almost, it's almost like a two-person job to, to open them up without touching anything. So, I guess I just have to be careful. But, I think here in about two weeks, should be seeing some little pins popping up, like those little Paziza pins popping up out of the garden bed. But I'll keep you guys updated, so wish me luck.